Okay. It should be episode two of By the Numbers League of Legends edition, presented by Alpha Draft. And kind of the kind of the memo that I got from last week's show, Monty, when I was kind of like meeting with the big wigs, was like try not to make it too explicit that you're just like shilling for a company, and like don't make it like that Simpsons episode where he mows in court, and then that guy comes in, he's like, oh, my laundry is done, and he gets that massive bag with like a dollar sign on. Like try to make it less obvious. So what I thought about is I thought about the format. What we're gonna do is. We're still going to talk a lot about the fantasy structure. That'll be the framework of how the episode goes. But the way we'll make it more interesting is we'll combine it, since we're going to do this show mostly before most of the, the leagues have begun for the week, with like a preview component. So we'll talk about the games that are coming up, how we see them going, and then within that, as a way to talk about the players, we can talk about fantasy-wise, like who does well, but maybe that doesn't translate to fantasy, who's an underrated player, maybe in actual real sense, qualitatively, but has really good fantasy stats. It's a good way to have a framework to actually discuss the players in a way that we actually don't on Summoning Insight. Now, we, by the way, that's also why, jokes aside, like, yeah, you always sell out all that stuff. No, we're rich, but we're not actually totally sell like, it's not like I. It's not like we got sponsored and then I just said, oh, by the way, Summoning Insight's cancelled, guys. Now it only is a show about fantasy. Like, come on, we got, it's just another show for free, right? Like, it's not quite that bad, so chill, chill the fuck out. So anyway, how are you this week anyway? I'm doing I'm doing well. Uh, we could also talk about I was playing uh, a bunch last week, so I wanted to start by talking about some of the the matches that uh, I had in terms of fantasy that did pretty well. Okay, well, I know one of the problems I sometimes have with someone inside Monty is like I get these notes back from from my uh, what do you call them like oh, what do you call it? consumer base or something when I do these like polls and testing groups, you know, and they tell me like hmm, could you get Mark Monty to like tone down the smugness that he tends to have when he gets predictions right. So uh, we'll just start the show with a segment where you talk about all the uh, good picks that you made and the players that won you money. So continue, <laughs> continue, my friend. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually just to we're going to take a look at a couple of these Korean ones. Uh, one contest from uh, day one and one contest from day two. I took first place in the day one one and second place in the day two. I had multiple entries, but to give you a sense, uh, I probably put I probably put in about 20 bucks, about four entries, uh, 250 each. Uh, for day one and day two, and I got back about 70 or 80 in total. So I did pretty well in these competitions, but these are the highest ranking ones that I had from each day in terms of lineup. Just to give some context to uh, what we're talking about here uh, and how to how to enter these contests to be successful. So this the first day was pick the shit show, right? So the shit show this time was Incredible Miracle versus Anarchy. It went to three games. It was a giant shit show, uh, and that way we had a lot of kills, a lot of assists, a lot of deaths. And the reasoning behind what I did was I took IM as a team because I thought they were going to win, uh, which they did. And then I took their support, A carry and top lane, because IM focused around their AD carry. And pre uh, prior to this week, Roar had like an 88% kill contribution for, from the AD carry position, so I knew he was going to get a bunch of points. And then also Anarchy tends to be a more, more mid-focused team around Mickey and Lyra. So I took them because they were kind of the core of that team. So I thought these were going to be the players that got the most points. And then Pilot for Janair is just a super consistent AD carry. Didn't do so, so well, but I still I still did okay in the end. Um, and and we go over the other I am, you also, like the AD carry, that team's the best in theory. Right, right, right. For IM, Roar is just like, he's their main carry. So... Uh, that's you, if you know the teams and then you can pick the shit show and then kind of like mash them together. And even though these teams were playing against each other because there were just so many kills, having everyone on both of those teams was really good. I've got a question before we move on. So on the top here, you picked IM as the actual team as well. Now, when you're mm -hmm. picking team, obviously the difference there is team is based on objectives, as you see here. It's not based on kills, etc. So did you what did you pick IM because they were cheap? Was it specifically like were they going to be a decent team in terms of objectives? Is it able? Is it difficult well, to actually predict that one? First off, like the more barons a team needs to close a game because they're garbage at closing games, the better off it is for you. So if one team needs two to three barons just to win one game, that's going to be pretty great. So really, you want teams that are bad at objective control, um, sure. especially. <laughs> yeah. Any, okay, the but isn't there a logic the that would say someone like Cloud9, even when they're behind, they get lots of turrets and stuff. So in theory, shouldn't they be a decent team? Like, yeah, I didn't see this. It's different in Korea because you want the team that goes to three games as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, different league format. 
Yeah. So I, I wanted IM because I thought they would win this series, and which they did, and it would they would take it to three games. If you want someone who takes turrets from behind, sure. I mean, you can go that way, but you really want you really want the team that's going to win with the the team one because they're going to take a lot more objectives, especially towers. Okay, and do you have another one of these to look at? Yeah. Which I league do. is that from? Uh, this is another day of Korea. So as you'll see here, uh, remember we talked last week about the value that uh, Fury had as a pick because he was super cheap. And even though Samsung lost, um, they lost in three games. And Fury really is the primary carry of Samsung. So he was only like 6,100, I believe, last week. So I had him in all my teams for these days just because I knew he would produce from behind. And even though he lost, he still got over 60 points. And then as for the rest of it, I mixed the KT and Jin Air rosters because I thought they would do pretty well in both of their early games in the week. Uh, so KT was playing CJ. And even though KT lost, Arrow and Someday have been really, really good. Uh, actually, last week, uh, last week, Someday is currently rated as the top point earner for top laners in Korea and arrows at number two behind pilot. So, uh, this was, this turned out really well. I also got GBM and chaser because they've been performing pretty well recently also. And then I got uh, gorilla just because he was pretty cheap and I was pretty sure he was going to win. Um, and then Jin Air because I was pretty sure they were going to win. So I had some more expensive players here, but I offset these expensive players from Jin Air and KT with Samsung's AD carry because he was like way undervalued last week, in my opinion. So that worked out really well also. Okay. Is that the end of the segment where you talk about who won? Yeah, yeah, and why I picked those teams. And uh, Well, I okay. won, Duncan. I was the winner. Oh, I see. Well, we'll try and <laughs> actually link this in later on when we do the Korean part. I'll right. try and recall which players maybe were unusual picks or who you think will continue their yeah. form. But we'll start out by doing the European LCS because obviously that's going to be the first to be played. Well, it's going to be played on the 4th. So, yeah, tomorrow. Start out with the first day of play. The I think we have five games. So what I'll do first is just list the games and then we'll have a brief overview of like which ones of these should be close, which should be stomps. So first game, Elements versus Giants. Now last season, yeah, ha ha, Giants beat them. It was that game though where Elements like had the game 90%, 95% won and then lost one team fight that actually cost them the whole game. With this new Elements, should they beat Giants handedly? I... I would think so, but Elements had one really solid win last week against a team that hadn't practiced and then had one game where they lost pretty hard. So uh, I'm not exactly sure about the whole Elements thing yet. I don't really have a great feel for them, I would say. Uh, that's. I think this game actually might be pretty close and therefore might be worth taking a look at uh, in okay, terms so of you, fantasy. In terms of, of points... Like an obvious one, I'm obviously going to mention it, is an obvious person in games that aren't going to be total stumps is Froggen. Because even yeah. if he loses, his stats aren't bad. And when he does well, they're going to be pretty good stats overall. For Giants, though, who do you feel? Who do you like for Giants yep. if you if you have to Hold, pick someone? Uh, just, to, just to talk about Froggen real quick. He was actually third in points among mid laners mm -hmm. last week in spite of the fact that he got crushed in one game. So he's pretty... He's, he was pretty consistent throughout those two games. It's hard to get good numbers yet um, because there, there have only been a couple games. But Froggen's a player that does tend to play cautiously. So he's he's pretty good. But he's also pretty expensive this week. So so okay. Um, I mean... I would say Elements is likely to win, but this one's going to be close. I mean, value picks might be Dexter, who's pretty cheap right now. I mean, in terms of salary, the average is around 7,000 something around there. I think maybe like 7,400 or 500 is like the average for most players, I think. Yeah, Dexter is at 7,000 though. And he's also third in the table among points for junglers. So that's actually pretty good value if they're going to win and this game's going to be close. So that mo that one might be something to take a look at, actually. If you're going to Considering... a Giants player, then one that's very cheap, but actually probably has a decent chance, is Whirly B, the top laner of Giants. He's only 5,700. Yeah, that's 
that's pretty discount. Just if you need uh, to fill up is, the team. Yeah, he's seventh out of ten though in terms of performance last week. But if you needed to fill it up, that wouldn't actually be the the worst choice as long as this game is going to be close. I mean, obviously on day one, there's I think there's some other games that are going to be closer that are going to be better. But if you need a consistent player, then I'd go with Froggen. And I think that Jay Wow and Dexter might be value here because they're very they're very low in terms of money. What is your general strategy? Do you do you just try and load up a couple of teams that are going to win? To try and pick players from across the league who will do well individually. What is your general approach? Um, I think in in this week, just taking or in day one of EU, just taking a look, I'd try to get. I'd I'd be really looking at unicorns of love versus Copenhagen Wolves. <laughs> That's like the That's prototypical ca- must be shit show match. I think it's pretty much guaranteed to be a shit show, and considering that Copenhagen Wolves performed actually pretty well last week. Uh, by by the standards that they're Copenhagen Wolves, um, okay. that's that's pretty good. Especially since Freeze is also extremely cheap this week at eight k, and is extremely the number one cheap. fantasy player right now. Yeah, he's. I have him. I have him in my Riot League as well. And Freeze is the number. He's the number one. Uh, 80 carry in terms of points and he's playing unicorns of love so you you've got you've got the number one 80 carry guaranteed shit show one of the cheaper 80 carries i mean he's literally freeze, listed freeze seven also salary freeze freeze also plays really well from behind he like he he gets points even when he loses or he did last week at least so that actually is a pretty damn good deal okay who else from copenhagen wolves fantasy wise do you think is a good pick Soren is super cheap at 7,500. He's the third cheapest mid laner. These are all real value picks this week. Uh, when I take a look at this, I'm probably going to try and pick uh, Unicorns of Love and Copenhagen Wolves both in the same team because oh, yeah. it's likely to be a shit show. And the U- these Copenhagen Wolves players are so cheap that you can offset them with um, some of the other power or like uh, the- some of the other players from Unicorns. So okay, another Copenhagen Wolves player who's cheap is unlimited is only fifty nine hundred, but obviously he's going to be stood next to the other freeze collecting assists from all yeah. those kills. So that's not a bad and, one for how cheap it is. Yeah, maybe go with Vizachachi as well in the top laner, uh, the top lane position. Go for somebody a little bit more expensive there, um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to just Young Buck, but. Who knows? Young Buck actually had a lot of points last week too. So the only thing is, though, one of the weird kind of um, anomalies seems to be that actually Power of Evil for Unicorns of Love, bearing in mind he's reasonably expensive, doesn't actually seem to be that much of a stats superstar. Because if you actually think of how they play Unicorns of Love, Power of Evil doesn't really have the games where he has like 13 kills, you know. He tends to have like a good game for Power of Evil is like 5, 1, and 3 or something, you know. That's like a kind of Power of Evil stat line. He's not the guy who, even if they win, goes crazy in, in fantasy stats, I think. What do you think? Uh, Yeah, it, especially he's been playing a lot of these more poke-based champions lately. If we think about his Varus picks or his Kog'Maw picks, these are champions that are going to be probably not finishing people off, but setting up kills for other players, poking them down before the team engages. So the part of that is his picks also, I think. Right. Who else from, um, like actually Kikis is reasonably high, 8,400 salary. What would you actually pick someone like Kikis into a fantasy team? Uh, no, he, he doesn't actually make that many points. Uh, I, I'd rather go with somebody more value like Airwalks actually in this matchup and what about as teams like would you pick either of those teams called wolves or unicorns love as your team in in the overall fantasy no i'd probably take fanatic <laughs> just because i w- i'm pretty sure they're going to beat rocket so that would be that, i think a, it, a, a safe pick like that's another danger with picking team is that for team you especially want the actual team overall to win Yes. It's more dangerous yeah. if they look. Whereas with players, like you can have a player like. lose. Yeah, a player can lose but get you good stats still. That's less dangerous there. So you, want the, teams, you want the team to be the lock, basically. There's also Yeah, exactly. And there's also going to be less differential between most teams because if you're going to win a game of League of Legends, 
the team is likely going to get somewhere between what eight and eleven turrets, pretty much guaranteed if you're winning. Uh, they're probably going to get at least a couple dragons and probably one baron. So the variance between teams is not so great because, I mean, there are a lot more kills. Kills are worth three points for a player, and barons barons are worth three points for a team in the game. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The, the variance between different teams is not going to be so great. So you just kind of want the one that's going to win. So if you said Fnatic's your team pick, does that mean you see Fnatic rock out as like a, is this like a, a, a surefire win for Fnatic? I would think so, just based on Rockat's performance versus Fnatic's performance in, in day one. Now, all the Fnatic players are super expensive. In fact, all Fnatic players have the highest salary at their per position. But if you have oh, extra... Worth it. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe if they don't just crush them in 20 minutes and get zero points. I think that if you have some... If you're going to go for value picks, like Copenhagen Wolves picks... Um, and then you want to fill out your roster with somebody who you know is going to be consistent, then Reckless is there if you have a lot of leftover money. And When, he's I, gonna... when I was picking teams, that's how I, that's my approach when I picked Fnatic, okay, is if I picked Fnatic, the first player I'm going for is Reckless, not for Febivan. Even though I think Febivan, his position is a better player than Reckless, if you think of how Reckless plays, if they win, Reckless is going to clean up a lot of kills in team fights. He's just going to last hit a lot of people. Whereas Febivan's style, he might kill some people in lane, but actually getting two or three kills in lane, stats wise, isn't that great for fantasy. You want to be the you want to be picking the players who are going to get the team fight kills at the end of the game because they're the ones who are really going to go crazy in stats, assists, kills. They're going to really have crazy stats. So Reckless is like the dream fantasy player, pretty much. Yeah, yeah he's he's quite good, and he and. He's number two or was number two last week behind Freeze in EU in terms of AD carry points. So obviously having the Freeze Reckless combo is probably still going to be pretty good in day one this week. Um, and Huni is just, Huni just always puts up points as a top later too. He wasn't as great as usual because he wasn't playing as many. I mean, he played some NAR this last week, so it wasn't the same kind of kills that he normally gets. But uh, that'll he's still going to be busting out carry top laners when he can. Now, H2K versus Gambit. How do you see this game going, Monty? I think I already know what you're going to say, but I think I have a different opinion, so let's see. The, I don't really... The problem with H2K is that their games are so clean when they win that they don't produce a lot of fantasy points. They're like Cloud9, right? They. So, and when they lose, they tend to lose really hard. So I don't... I kind of don't... I kind of want to stay away from the H2K games. I don't. I'm also leery about Gambit because I I just don't know how good they are because they didn't. They played really poorly in week one, and then because they hadn't practiced. But I don't even know what a practiced Gambit looks like yet. So I would kind of stay away personally. I would stay away from Gambit matches. Okay, so that's Monty's advice. Now here's Thorin's advice. I'm going all in on Gambit this week, boys. I I got I got forgiven in a bunch of my teams because again, if they do well. His stats are going to be crazy. So he's not actually that That's expensive true. for how good he is right now. He's got a pretty good salary ranking. I think H2K is beatable yeah, if Gambit super does cheap. well. So that, super to me, cheap. that's a reasonable pick. Forgiven is 7,100 salaries, the second cheapest AD carry after Woolite. So I think you're right. You could, you could take a risk there for sure and say, I'm all inning on Forgiven. And if he goes off, then yeah. I, I, if you're looking at day one, you could have a couple teams with Forgiven in it, that's for sure. And I don't think it's impossible that Gambit can lose the game, but he has good stats. That's another factor that I added in there. Well, he did have pretty bad stats last week while losing, but... And then, yeah, the one where they had no practice. And then the other player from Gambit that I gambled on was when I needed to fill up my team, Kabashad's reasonably cheap. And if they're going to win, he's going to be one of the players you'd think who'd do well as well. He's only 6,200. Yeah, Kabashad actually... That's another good one. That is another good one. So, yeah, maybe you take a, a couple of dice rolls on Gambit to win that one. I think H2K is probably still going to win. you got to go with them as the favorite. Yeah, I think they're player, the favorite, but... but I think that's one where it's possible the underdog can win. Yeah. So it's, it's not that implausible. So the next game we have is SK versus Orihen. Now, who, who can say what will happen here? Yeah. So that, I mean, form tells you Orihen should be doing really well, right, Monty? Right. And I mean, I think SK performed better than I thought they would in the first week of play. They gave Fnatic a run for their money and all that jazz. But 
Orihan is looking s- strong out of the gates. Is Orihan so, the type of team so far who would close the game out quickly, you think? Um, I mean, they actually did well, pretty well in terms of points last week. Like, Soaz was number four, so they they weren't closing particularly efficiently, and things were a, a, a little bit bloodier, I would say. But their players are really quite expensive this week. Obviously, Peke did did quite well from the mid lane. The cheap ones on their team, uh, Mithy and then Soaz, is, is slightly a little bit above, but the others are really expensive. Like, Niels is the second most expensive any character. I wouldn't, I, for this game especially, I wouldn't pick... Many, yeah, because it could be it could be a shit show though is the thing it could be. But I feel like UOL versus Copenhagen Wolves. If you're going to be looking at a shit show, like that's the real shit show. <laughs> okay, so that's day one. On day two, we start off Fnatic versus Gambit. Fnatic's going to wreck them. That's yeah, that's going to be really one sided more than likely. Fair enough. Giants versus SK. Let me pull up day two real quick. Giants versus SK. Uh, that could be. That could be somewhat close. But I think SK probably still has a pretty big edge right there. So I don't know if I really go into that too much. You may be able to get some good value in that game out of like Freddy, who's pretty low. On day two, in terms of points, in terms of his cost, um, yeah, yeah, you may be able to get some good value out of Freddy or actually Candy Panda too. Relatively low that week might put up some points versus Giants if you're trying to fill out a roster. But I wouldn't go too heavily into SK on that day. Okay, Unicorns of Love versus Rocket. Shouldn't this be a game that should be fairly long? I would think so. I would think is, so. is this the shit show of the of the four here, five here? Uh, could be. It's either that or it's going to be Ori Hen versus Copenhagen Wolves. These are the two that are most likely. That's what I. That's how I feel. If you were gonna take a Rockout player, because obviously, so far Rockout wouldn't be a team that we'd ever be picking anyone from. Is there anyone from Rockout you would actually draft? Do you think? Just in terms of in terms of price, like is there anyone reasonable you think? Nuke Duck's performance has been not too great, but he is really, really cheap. Yeah, he's, he's actually o- he's the cheapest only... mid in the league at the moment. Uh behind Betsy. Sixty two hundred, Betsy's at fifty eight hundred. So uh last week just look at the stats here real quick. Last week Nuke Duck ranked fifth. So he's good value, I think, especially versus Unicorns of Love. He might do okay. Okay, and Wu Light is also very cheap. Yeah, I would not. Thunder is very cheap. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not. You're steering clear of Rock at the moment. Light. Um, Vander. Vander is actually good value here, I think, too. If you want to add a last there, player, I think he's got your... You know, there's a there's a possibility that Rocket get, gets the upset versus Unicorns of Love 2, in which case picks like Vander and Yankos become really high value. Yankos is the cheapest jungler, but he wasn't even the worst jungler in terms of points last week. He was middle of the pack. He was sixth out of ten. So... so- Actually, Rocket has some good value here if you think they're going to beat Unicorns of Love. They have some really good value. What about Hitch to Kivas Elements? Do you stay clear of this game? I, I would steer clear of this one. I think this one's going to be like a really low kill affair. Just knowing the more, uh, I suppose, tactical styles of both of these teams and the more reserve style from Elements and the, the objective based style of H2K that. I just don't think this game is going to produce that many fantasy points. So that leaves us with Orhen Copenhagen Wolves. Is yes. there anyone in this particular matchup? Is there anyone different based on the players we were talking about before? Are there any that you're going to highlight specifically for this type of matchup? The problem with the Orihen players is they're all really expensive. At every single Orihen player, just like all the Fnatic players, are number one. Every single Orihen player is number two. 
So just due to the expense of the players, I'm not sure you're going to be able to fill out a roster. I, I, I here I would kind of I take Copenhagen Wolves in the in the hope that they win, and then maybe I I bet more heavily actually on the Unicorns of Love versus Rockat game and try and play both sides of UOL versus Rockat, and then just play one side of Orihem versus Copenhagen Wolves and see if they get the upset for a, a million points. Just because the the prices of the Orihem players are so high that I don't think you can put together as good of a roster. Even if Orihem wins, you're going to have to balance it out on another matchup and probably one that you think is going to to win. So you'd probably have to balance it with SK, whose players are comparably expensive as well. So might be worth going for the Hail Mary here and for the CW players. Especially if you're playing a contest like a normal one where you're trying to get first place. Right. Because you're banking on your ideal scenario to happen there, basically. Right. Could lose out on that one. Uh, I, CW is still the underdogs in that matchup, so I wouldn't say the odds are, are with you, but the payout is pretty big right there. See, what we're going to do now is for the memes, because every, every successful show I've learned money needs memes that people repeat. <laughs> I'm going to have one where you dress up in really theatrical, like sort of clothing. It's like a, a period set piece, and it's just you, say, like shilling for alpha draft saying like may the odds ever be in your favor so, something like that that's what i yeah be ever in your favor <laughs> whatever i don't listen money i don't watch shit like that like you've just given yourself away there but you should have been like yeah yeah that's that's what they say on <laughs> that movie or whatever like but you you give yourself away see monty's the guy out of the two of us who watches twilight he loves some you know what even is that? <laughs> Catching fire, whatever it's called. Hunger Games, that's right. Personally, I, I'm actually I'm actually the real man of literature. I'm I'm sort of everything Monty yeah. pretends to be. He affects yeah. my personality, All actually. Right. But All but right. I'm not insecure, so I don't have to show that on in the public, you know. I pretend to just be like, you know, a, a working man, you know. See how see how the dynamic works here, guys? Okay. So anyway, <laughs> let's move over to uh, North America, Monty's region that he actually represents there. So uh the, the region that I represent. Yeah, it's your region. I didn't even live there. Yeah, it's true. You have betrayed them in many senses. That's another region. That's another set of people you sold out for the money, Monty. So anyway, so over in NA, we start off, enemy esports are going to play Liquid. Now, on paper, Liquid finished third last season. Enemy's a brand new team. Is the Liquid of this season going to have a close match with NME? Probably not. I think enemies just going to get crushed by TL. And that said, all the TL players are super expensive too. So maybe if you're filling out a roster, you could go for one of the uh, the TL players. But I think this match is not very interesting or good in terms of fantasy. If you're going to pick TL players, though, like give me an idea. Who, who if because it because it, when you're going to pick players, obviously some of them that you know are going to get points, you're willing to spend a lot of money on. So which of the TL players are falling into that category? Piglet, perhaps. He's um, very expensive, but he is in theory against bad Eddie carries. That should be his dream world. I actually think that if you're going to be playing enemy, Otter is pretty good uh, as far as enemy players go. In fact, yeah. So I would I would probably stay away from that particular matchup. Uh, Piglet was number two overall in the region last week behind Double Lift. Double Lift is not bad value this week, actually, but we'll get to that. Um, so TL, I, I'd actually go with someone like Quas if I had to spend a bunch of money. Quas or Phoenix, because both of them are doing pretty darn well at their respective positions. Especially Quas. So if I had to go for a TL player that I think is going to be really consistent and put up some points, I'd probably take Quas over over Piglet. Because I think from AD carry, you're going to get performance out of some other, some different players, I should say. Especially like Emperor or Core JJ, who are super cheap. Yeah, and the problem is Dominate is really he's ninety six hundred. That's fairly expensive, bearing in mind that's junglers hugely don't expensive actually, for a jungler. The problem is junglers aren't going to get as much as like 
either mids and ADKs by default or a top who wins heavily over another. So it's kind of risky to put a jungler unless you think it's a lock that this guy's going to get a lot. Yeah, I do think that's risky. Now, after that, we have Cloud9, the brand new Cloud9 versus Gravity. Can hit, First question is, what are the odds of Gravity actually upsetting Cloud9 here? Because then that opens all the door. If you think it's possible, suddenly there's picks we could make here. I mean, yeah. You think, is, is it possible? This Cloud9 lost to Dignitas last week, you know, I, it's definitely possible. And it wasn't really a close game between Cloud9 and Dignitas either. Cloud9 pretty much just rolled over and got crushed. They're still having some issues in terms of actually getting their, you know, getting rolling with their new roster. That said, Cloud9, again, notorious for not giving very many points because they, they just place in the TSM game that they won, they spent most of the game running around the map just trying to bait TSM, had a couple of team fights and then won the game. They tend to be very decisive in their wins, but more objective focused. And the, the C9 players were hor horrible in terms of points last week. So then if someone wants to bet on this game, are they betting like kind of in that scenario of the Orhead and Company the Wolves side? Like if you're going to bet it, bet the gravity side and just assume they're going to get the upset and therefore pick, go down on, go double down yeah. on the old tech type players and hope yeah. you get the big and, stats. Yeah. Oh, a good way to get big stats this week is probably to bet gravity Dignitas, gravity, uh, gravity uh, TDK. Just because if gravity wins that game, Dignitas versus the guaranteed shit show is probably going to be Dignitas versus TDK. So bet on both sides of that matchup with Gravity. Hope for the upset because that could be pretty big points overall. And which Gravity players are you betting on? Is Altec an obvious one? I actually would stay away from Keen. I think Keen is... Because no not... one knows what he's going to play, including Keen? Yeah, like if he's going to play Malphite and get zero kills, then what the fuck? I would I would lean more towards a hey, Hans are so expensive though. Hanser probably isn't worth that value, even though he was third in points last week. He's fourth in salary among top laners and still not likely to win. Altec's also very expensive, but more of a Bunny yeah, Fufu. I don't know, the around, gravity seventy six hundred. Yeah, that's third most expensive among supports, though. So that's supports, though, because supports, again, are, like junglers, is not a, a super big role to go in on. You know what? I take it back. I actually wouldn't play <coughs> Gravity. They're too expensive for the fact that they're likely to lose. Okay. Well, what about this game, Monty? This has to be tantalizing for you. TSM versus Tip. This yeah, could be a lot this of kills, one, right? Yes. This one could very well be a lot of kills, and another great strategy this week might be to bet, like, TSM Dignitas, TSM... In fact, what I'm probably going to do is do TSM Dignitas, TSM TDK, Team Impulse Dignitas, Team Impulse TDK, and just bet on both sides of those matchups since they're likely to be close. And Tip tends to have pretty bloody games. So let me ask you this. Is this where Monty falls back on last season's dream that he's just going to buy up Rush and hope that Rush actually plays Champions League? Rush Impact. And abuse Santorin. Yeah, Rush and Impact, definitely. So it's all about the top jungle all in for Monty here. That's right. I think those are those are going to be the most value value positions. Impact had a bad game against CLG last week, which dropped him, but he did. I mean, his first game when he played Yasuo, he got a billion points. And it's fucking it Impact. It's Impact versus Dyrus. I mean, this is a great matchup for Impact. Well, for both of them, Impact and Rush, okay, they are both third highest ranked but actually, for the actual salary amount relative to all players, it's not that bad, actually. They're both 8,400. So that's actually, it's above average, but it's nothing crazy. And if you think that they're going to do well in two games, well, I mean, you're only betting the first game in most of the contests, right. but that's not terrible. And if, these, and if you're filling out the rest of your roster with Dignitas or TDK players, they're going to be you cheap. can afford to spend money on the, the players you think are going to do well. In, in Team Impulse, probably the most valuable players are... are uh, rush and uh, Russian impact in terms of that's where you're going to probably get more production compared to Dig versus TDK. Although if you're taking TDK, there's an argument to be made that you would take Seraph and then take Apollo or someone like that instead. And uh, just because he's if if TDK wins, they're probably getting a lot of points for Seraph as well. Uh, 
So this is where we have to use this show, Monty, and the power of what this show is capable of with this different premise to be able to actually give props. I do like the inverted commas there to players that actually we routinely abuse, but we can say they're good and then just pretend not to mention the fantasy part. And then fans will be like, oh, OK, they acknowledged him. So, Monty, if you're going to bet the TSM side of this, you, don't, you know, you would, in a, if this was a real show, you'd be like, hey, Bjergsen's the best player. Like, he's going to have the best impact. But you know what, Monty? There's a guy who plays AD carry. That's a position that gets a lot of points. Who, in a messy game like this, Wild Turtle, he's, he's 9,000. That's not the most expensive. That's not a bad bet, right? I agree. It's not. It's definitely not a bad bet. Wild so, Turtle did pretty poorly last week, though. Which is why okay. he's, I think, a little bit lower this week. He ranked 7th out of 10 in terms of points from 80 carries. But I think he should be able to do okay in this game. Because the thing about it is that while Wild Turtle isn't great at laning, in fact, he's below average for an 80 carry at, uh, at laning, it's Apollo and Adrian. It, it's not super intense competition coming from that sector. What about, is there anyone else on TSM you'd put money on? I'd say Bjergsen and I, I, I agree with you. I think Bjergsen and, and Wild Turtle are probably pretty good bets. Lust Boy as well. He's fairly cheap, 7,200. That's not terrible. Yeah, it's okay. In general, I tend to, it, it, just my approach at the moment is I'm tending to stay away from supports. Like I never spend a lot on my support. No, it's so really hard to predict not. when a support's going to do well. So I tend to just try and with them. I try and get one that's cheap, but I think has like a an odd, an off chance of having good points as a result of what team he's on, basically. Yeah, like I would also, with. I also think that supports are one of those positions that tends to do well when their team does well. It's hard to have a good game from behind as a support. Um, but the, I would just take a support that's cheap that you think is really likely to win. So and by the way, if we're talking even about Lemon, players, even Lemon, <coughs> I mean, we talked about how shitty cloud nine is for, for fantasy, but even lemon nation here might be okay just because he is actually cheap and they're likely to beat gravity. And with supports, once everybody groups up, they get assists and team fights and they're not a very productive position in the first place. One player I should mention before we move on from TSM is even if you think TSM's going to win, I would probably say don't ever get lured in by how cheap Dyrus is because we've all seen games where they win the game because Dyrus can play from behind really well as a tank. So you're not going to get a whole lot of fantasy points out of those wins. So those wins are deceptive. He's cheap for a reason. Yeah, he was 8 out of 10 in top laners last week. He only had 17 points a game on average so that's pretty shit see that's another example Monty, of where we get to use the opposite logic like in a real show i'd be like listen stats wise he's never going to be great but he actually contributes like intangibles to the win and helps the team concept but in a show like this i could be like no dyrus is trash yeah. he will never yeah. do anything even when he wins who cares anyone could be an upset you know all the old crap yeah. that all the fans say i mean i'd much rather have seraf than dyrus because seraf actually well, showed us that one to you. Okay. <laughs> we all know that one. Okay. So he's, so cheaper, on. he's, he's cheaper, but he also has higher average points this season so far. Not by a lot, but. So how do you like, Monty, the grudge match? Team 8, Nien versus Doublelift. I always said I'd be better than Doublelift. I'd continue. Now you get a chance to show it. Is this going to be an epic AD carry battle? No, I think CLG is going to crush Team 8. Well, so much for that then. Is there any CLG players you'd want to bet on still? Uh, double lift because he had a crazy number of points last week. Uh, he was number one, but it's also the way that he got his number one in the region. He averaged nearly 50 points last week, which is a game, which is massive. So he's also not the most expensive AD carry. So if we have a similar situation, if you have to fill out a roster, he's and he, the other thing about Doublelift is last season, he had the lowest variance between uh, games that he won and games that he lost. Doublelift's a player that's very consistent, does well when he loses, does well when he wins. So I think that he's like one of the players that you really want to pick. He's fantastic for fantasy. Which then brings us to the match you highlighted before, the, the shit show on the horizon, as it were, Dignitas versus TDK. 
and uh, TDK, I think, should have their starting roster back. So that means that they should actually put up more of a fight against Dignitas uh, than some of the games in the past week. So this is also a grip, just matchup wise, like the three carry players on each team are the best players on each of the teams in theory. So it should be a good ma player matchup, I think, in terms of producing a lot of kills going along in the game. Yeah, exactly. Which players specifically do you like, though? You said Saraf already. Is that going to count for this game? Yeah, Seraph because when TDK wins, he does well, and they also tend to pick carry top laners where he can <coughs> get a bunch of kills. So even though TDK didn't win last week, Seraph actually finished above Dyrus in terms of points, and he's really, really cheap. And because he plays these carry top laners, if, if TDK wins, he's likely to have a good score line for fantasy. Um, I mean, Ninja's super cheap also. I mean, everybody's cheap, so you can kind of just play both sides here. Gamsu is five thousand, and this could be yeah, a game where he can have a good game. Right? That's a very that's a very good like bargain pick to. But Gamsu, pick Gamsu, Gamsu plays more tanks is the problem. Okay, and Gamsu, uh, even though Dignitas beat C nine last week, he still averaged less than ten points a game. So, okay, so I would rather go with Seraph. Yeah, I would rather go with Seraph. Um. Yeah. Seraph. <laughs> In terms of that top lane. Okay, so the two junglers for both teams are very cheap, but also crap players. So would you, would you pick either of them, Monty, for this? Well, you have to pick one of them if you're going to try and play both sides. I'd rather have Kez, I think. Actually, Azinki had that really good game versus C9. I'd go with Azinki. Okay. Uh, he was the main reason they beat Cloud9, actually, with the, uh, his Zac play, so... Now, and then mid, it, it, mid, obviously, Ninja take... hasn't played yet, so he's yeah. three, $300 extra than Shifter is Ninja. So which of the two would you be banking on? It's got to be I mean, the potential probably, of Ninja, right? I probably have a team with both of them. Uh, I mean, two different teams, one with each, I should okay. say. I wouldn't use one as a flex. I'd use uh, an AD carry as a flex, probably like double lift with this, just because I know that he's going to be performing well. So which of the two would you bank on now, though? Who do you think's the best value? I don't know. Does it matter? They're so close. They're so close, like I said. I just have one team with Ninja and one team with Shifter. Is this the type of league where you might actually pick Kiwi Kid? Is he going to produce a lot of points? Considering he's 5,000 salary? <laughs> oh my god. This is torturous. The the which is better, Kiwi Kid or Smoothie? Oh, babies to support TDK. Uh, well, he was the sub. Okay. Oh, so they've listed the wrong one here. Oh, never mind then. They've got both listed here. Hmm, weird. Yeah, they're both. Okay, Smoothie. Well, just in case the we don't, they know don't get back. Said. Obviously, this also depends on the fact that these players are actually able to play, which hopefully they will be. I'd take Kiwi Kid. Fuck it. Yeah, why not make some money off him? That's what he's there for. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now we go to day two. Day two is C9 versus Tip. Is Tip actually... Here's the thing. The real question here isn't will Tip win. It's if Tip win, will they produce a lot of points in doing so against Cloud9? What do you think? Uh, let me pull up the... Oh, I don't have those matches pulled up yet. Hold on, let me go to a different site to grab them so I can see it. First match is Tip versus who? C9. Ooh. I... I don't know about that one. Is Tip actually a team that you would pick for the overall team in yeah, either of these they, play days? They, when they win, they make a lot of they have a lot of points, right? So you have that advantage going into it. But they again they are pretty expensive as a team this week. So 
So liquid gravity, how do you feel about this one? Is this a high level shit show? <laughs> liquid versus gravity. Probably what do I want? I would I mean I'm looking at things like TDK versus enemy and teammate versus dignitas down the line. So I don't know if I'd invest too heavily, especially given the the expense of both liquid and gravity players. I, I think you just kind of give this one a pass. Okay, so you say that, but are you really? Do you really have the self control to avoid CLGTSM? The potential. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Think of it. Although, the nice thing about CLG versus TSM is that both teams have clearly very different strengths. You, if you can create a roster with Bjergsen and then balance it out with Doublelift and uh, Enzy and Spartan, then that actually works out pretty well. Where you could use the strengths of both teams. And in fact, you, you maybe do that and balance out, like you take Bjergsen and Santorin and then, or Bjergsen and Lustboy and then take players from TDK and then make another roster with players from NME and then do CLG, get double lifted Zion and then the same thing with TDK and NME. And that way you could bet on both sides of both matchups at the same time. Uh, I think this one should be, this one should be pretty bloody. So you could do that as long as you're balancing it out with either the TDK enemy game or the teammate Dignitas game. Yeah, I think that sounds that sounds pretty good. So, uh, taking a couple players, I wouldn't bet on this match unless I was betting on both sides of it. Like I said, and betting on both teams' strengths. This one could be pretty close though, and also pretty, pretty bloody. So TDK NME. First things first. Who do you actually think is the favorite to win this? I don't know if TD. I, I honestly have no idea if TDK has their full roster again. I don't know how they're going to perform because we've never seen it. So are you going to just bet either side? Yeah, I'd bet both sides of TDK enemy for sure. And is it going to be different on this specific match as to which players you'll take from the ones you mentioned before? Is there anyone who you'd discount for this matchup? The issue is here is that they kind of have similar strengths, the TDK enemy, where both of them have more carry-oriented top laners and like decent AD carries. So... For me, the big X factor in TDK going forwards is I need to see how well Ninja will actually do. Because if he turns out to be yes. crap, then I'm never going to bet. But I think he has the potential to be like a sleeper. Yeah, I agree with you. If Ninja's playing this week, I'd take him just because you could get... He's so cheap, and you could get that upset. Yeah, and that's the thing. Because he has no stats, that's why he has to be very cheap. Because if he turns out to be good, there's no way to predict it right now. So it's actually a potential value pick if you want to gamble yeah. on that. If you think TDK is going to win, especially, go for it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Now, teammate versus Dignitas. So teammate's a pretty different team to Dignitas. Where, do, you always say that teammate is a team where the strength is the top laner, right? Uh, well, they, they put a lot of focus around the top laner, okay. and Kelly does tend to play more carry tops. So, yeah, it, it, in terms of what you can, if you're betting, if you want to get assemble a roster that's both of these teams at the same time, they're cheap enough that you could probably pull that off. In and in that case, um, in that case, I so would Kali take. So Kali's is sixty one hundred. I I would lean that. towards the, the the top half of the map for. So I would take sort of the Porpoise and Kali, uh, and then Slushy, and then on the bottom side, I'd I'd skew more towards Stignatas. So another matchup where Kiwi Kid's not a bad pick. Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> right, okay, let's do Korea now. That's NA. So, this week we have, let me see. I mean, in theory, some are going to start in like a few hours. So, we have two games today. Yes, I, I will be casting them in a few hours. One tomorrow, two the day after that, and then two more after that. So, we'll go to, today is going to be SK Telecom versus Koo. Now, last season, that would have been a barn burner. could be like three games. This season, I get the sense Monty says that's just like a, an SKT stomp. Probably. So I not a good game to bet on? Because SKT players are very expensive. They're, they're really expensive. Um, and there's no guarantee that this is going to go to, to three games, right? On day one, this... Day one for for Korea is actually kind of difficult because I'm not sure that any of these games are going to go to three. 
just because Gen Air should crush Samsung, but Samsung did come out with some good games, and Dodgen should crush IM. Samsung versus Gen Air is probably the most likely to go to three games of these. See, what we'll do here, Monty, is next week, because I'm not going to say it right now, but I've done a lot of crazy bets on LCK this week, trying to pick people I think are going to be like crazy outsiders <laughs> that are really cheap and getting me mad points for like the bad teams. So if next week it all pulls off and I've like won loads of money on it, then we'll have a segment where like I'm the smog one at the beginning. But if that doesn't happen, Monty, because I'm not going to mention my strategy right now until I know if it works, we'll, we just won't have that segment and we'll never speak of it again. There will be no segment about my theory on how I'm trying. Basically, this is the way my mind works Monty. When the alpha draft experts like told me like the basics of how they think you should bet and how you like what kind of patterns to follow, I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm, uh huh. And how does that work? Yeah. And in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm the genius. I'm gonna do my own <laughs> shit. And then, it, I, then because I it, maybe it'll work. Who knows? Maybe I'm like the rain man of this of this betting shit. <laughs> but, if it, but if it doesn't work, then I will just bend the knee and fall in line with the proper betting strategy from next week. On. So just a little a little teaser for next week, there, guys. So anyway, starting out. So we're not gonna to go skt versus coup but maybe maybe in some crazy world thor and bet some coup players we'll never find out though so Jenner versus samsung this is a game i bet i bet both sides are fairly heavily especially because i thought to myself like if we just look at how much they are let me see i want to see how much some of the players cost they're not that expensive like I think the players, I think Samsung I'd... is super cheap. Samsung may be very undervalued here. And the reason why I say that is Samsung actually had a really good game last week where they played a pick composition versus the Koo Tigers. They beat the Tigers in game one and the composition looked really polished. So what this says to me is that right now I feel that Samsung is a team that if you give them a few days, they're going to come up with some wacky strategy that is very polished and they can take a game off you, but they can't close a series because they can't adapt down the stretch. So, and given Jin Air's performance where they just got ultra stopped by KT, I think Samsung can win game one and then Jin Air will win game two and three, which means that Samsung, again, I told like last week when we were looking at the beginning of the show, again, Fury is a really good value pick here even if you just use him to fill out a roster because he's Fury the cheapest gets Sorry. and Fury gets fucking points because Samsung plays compositions that focus around Fury. So he does well, even when he's behind, which is great. His variance isn't that much. I wonder when they're actually going to like, in fact, Samsung are all the cheapest players this on the, on this play there. So is there anyone else aside from him that you'd pick? Uh, uh, let me, just looking right now. Oh, the other player that you, you want to, that you, from Samsung versus Gen Air, Pilot obviously uh, had a bad series against KT, but otherwise has maintained a really high, a really high, um, Really high KDA. What about GBM? He's he's eighty two hundred. He's the third highest ranked one on this. So if you want to, if you're talking about big points, scale, that's not that's so bad for that much salary. Well, GB, GBM is actually number two in terms of fantasy points produced out of the mid lane. Right now, behind Easy Hoon, who's number one, who's only played one game. So that's. That's pretty good. I mean, if you have if you have extra points to splurge on Easy Hoon or Faker, they're so consistent. Faker has very little point variance when he's ahead versus when he's behind. So you actually might pick Faker anyway. Uh, yeah, just because he's super good. Just guaranteed lose. points. So his he's, standard, he's, he's like the big. Uh, his standard, people. his standard deviation is incredibly low. Like he just is ridiculously consistent. Okay, so on day two, Najin plays IM. You, you're that you're that convinced that Najin just cr just creams them to zero. No, I'm not because Najin lost a fucking anarchy, dude. Najin is just crazily inconsistent, but you never know which Najin you're gonna get. And IM, IM has yet to put out a single polished game plan, unlike Samsung. This could easily turn into some sort of giant giant shit show, but it's just not reliable. I feel more confident about Samsung versus Jin Air going to three games than I do about Najin versus IM. But IM does have uh, some cheap players, though. Like their jungle is 6,000, top lane is 6,000. 
And Roar actually puts out a lot of points, is the thing. They're incre- they're 80 carry, and he has a really high kill contribution. So there is some upside to picking Roar. Uh, there's some upside to picking Frozen, who had a really good week last week also. What about picking Najin AD carry, 8,200? That should be good for some points, right? But Roar, Roar did better than OQ did last week by a little bit. Obviously, though, if Najin gets the vein and OQ has his hands on that, he can really put up points. And they've been really prioritizing that vein. I just, I'm not confident in this one. I, I feel like Najin's just going to 2-0 it. Okay. So, Ku versus CJ. Now, come on, this has to be three games, right? You, you're that hard. You've just hopped off the G Tigers bandwagon so hard that now you're like flying a little <laughs> CJ flag. Yeah, they're really good, man. Like CJ is like a three game team, dude. They just do that to everyone. Yeah, I agree with you, actually. I think CJ gets lazy sometimes in picks and bands. <coughs> they played a really garbage composition versus KT in game one. So I think this is, I agree with you. Especially looking that the other matches are all going to be stomps. So I agree. This is by far the the most likely one to go to three games. Uh, and the players on CJ and Ku are not the Ku players are more expensive than the CJ ones at every position. But CJ is the favorite here. So this is actually really good value for CJ. This is really good value for CJ. Like in a matchup like this. I mean, he didn't have great stats before, but Coco is 9,000. What do you think of that, bearing in mind who he's playing against? I mean, he has a pretty good chance uh, to get some good points. Absolutely. I think Coco is, yeah, especially matchup-wise. Kuro was nine at, ninth out of 10, or actually more than that, 12, because it's... Uh, We've uh, over multiple weeks of Korea so far, and we've had some mid lane substitutions. So he's really a, in the in the dumpster in terms of points right now. So here's the question: If someone was to decide on this game to take an AD carry, there's only 600 difference between Prey 10,800 and Bang 10,200. But you're saying CJ are favored to win. So would you actually take Bang out of that with the 600 discount? Uh, Bang is higher money i i think that i think i'd i'd take i take space here you take space oh that's i meant space actually i didn't i didn't mean to say bang i mean out okay. of cj yeah, sorry and you're confusing okay. me <laughs> okay so so would you actually take space over prey in this matchup because you think cj is uh, going to win yes because i think because i think uh, cj is going to win let me just check their points from the last few weeks, though. They're really close in terms of points. Prey is sixth overall. Space is seventh. But because I think CJ is going to win, and because CJ has been building compositions more around space recently, like a lot of Jinx, so, so have the, the Tigers. Uh, they've actually been running very similar styles of composition. But I th- because I think CJ is going to win, I think Prey will have a few more points. So Mad Life is 6,400. Uh, do you, what do you do in general? Do you, do you, are you like me? Do you tend to stay away from supports in terms of not just getting really yeah. bargain ones? Yeah, you can get some pretty decent bargain ones. But Mad Life's KDA is actually pretty good. Mad Life, let me check his average points per game. He's at about 20, 20 plus points per game, which is decent. It's not as good as Sweet, who is the real value. And since Sweet is actually cheaper, but it's not as likely to go to three games. Nah, fuck it. I just go with Mad Life. And Sweet, just to clarify, is the Jin Air support. Yeah. Okay. And he's basically just this, $100 this one, less than Mad Life. The problem when we talk about, if you had to save, if you, you were in a situation where you had to save 100 bucks, then Sweet is the best one because Sweet is actually averaging over 30 points a game right now. So Sweet has been really performing. Uh, but Jenner is also probably going to stomp Spenu. Why do you think... The problem, the problem with the, the, the weeks or the day three and day four for Korea 
is that the other three matchups beyond the Tigers versus CJ are all incredibly one-sided. Okay. Is there anyone out of these other two, Samsung SKT and IMKT, who you're still going to pick? Okay, so you've said Faker's like a, he's basically like a, a reckless, forgiven type lock to get points no matter what almost. Yes. So he's still a decent one to spend a lot on. What about from right, but KT though? Is Samsung there a lock has, there? Samsung, I don't think, can upset SKT even with a lot of polished play. So, but again, Fury, super cheap. Super cheap. If you if you if you have a lot of high expense players, like if you take a lot of players from CJ and from the Tigers, and you just need a flex player that is going to put up points that is cheap, I would definitely go with Fury again. I think Fury is just so such good value. The problem here is that, like you're saying, you're expecting KT to two zero IM, and the problem is KT players are very expensive. Yes. Like Nagne is $100 less than whoever plays for SKT. So even if they're both going to 0 why not pick the SKT one and gamble that it's Faker that gets played and you'll get a lot more points than Nagne, one would assume. Because, because here's, here's the reason why. When Nagne wins a game, his points are actually better than, better than Faker's. Like his, his average points when winning are second highest behind Easy Hoon. And remember when KT wins, they tend to get a lot of kills in their win because they do a lot of turret diving and they, they just dive you under your tower. If we look at how many points they got in the first game against CJ, so Nagne, Nagne is a player where if you think Nagne is going to win, he puts <coughs> up a shit ton of points, more points than Faker does so far this season. Just something to consider. Because they tend to play bloodier games when they're But winning. there's also the fact that in terms of direct matchup, if Faker plays, he's playing against Samsung's mid, whereas Nagne is playing against Frozen. That's true. Shouldn't that be a bigger differential between the two? I agree. Yeah, that's true. Like the likelihood of Faker then also snowballing is pretty good as well. Yeah. And the reason behind Arrow is that Arrow has had a lot of points this season. He's two overall behind Pilot. So Pilot and Arrow have been the most consistent AD carries. Uh, Pilot, Pilot's a player, though, that has the AD carry from Jin Air. Uh, he his standard deviation is really really low, so that he does well when he's winning. He does well when he's behind. Yeah, the thing is, Monty. I mean, you you can forgive me for thinking that uh, CJ's Eddie Carey was Bang because if you see a picture of Bang and a picture of Prey, I challenge you, my friend, without uniform, to tell me which one is which. <laughs> yeah, you mean space. That's right. <laughs> Space, exactly. Space and bang. So you don't even know. <laughs> I still don't know. They're both just guys who look chubby with glasses, mate. That's it. That's it. And they just click. Plus mouse too. That doesn't interest me that much, believe it or not. <laughs> to quote Shania Twain, that Fair doesn't enough. impress me much, Monty. Except oh, she never said the Monty part at the end there. She just, <laughs> she just said that part and then put the record out. <laughs> Wouldn't mean as catchy. I think that's it for this week, Monty. We've successfully covered all three regions. I know what people are thinking. Wait a minute, but LPL's on the site? Yeah. That's all that needs to be said. First of all, <laughs> even if you're an expert on LPL, you probably can't predict half these matchups. And also, no. the salaries in LPL are so wacky. It's like, I need I need that to settle down a while before we bring that in. Monty. Yeah. Also, because if you look at the last week of LPL, when the teams were just subbing in random players, and who the fuck knows in LPL, whether it's Koro, who's going to be playing, or amazing J. The worst one is and Pawn and Bymir because they're totally different styles of play. Like, I don't want to yes. bet thinking Pawn's playing, he's going to dumpster someone and then have Bymir play a control mage and just go super safe. Like, no thanks. That's not a good bet. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like LPL is a little bit like spinning the spinning the roulette wheel right now. I agree. Once we but if get you want to gamble, though, that's where you can get a lot of probably <laughs> cheap ones that are super good one-off yeah. picks, so... Later in the season, when LPL kind of gets its shit together, the teams start to make a bid for the playoffs. You, it might be worth it, but when no one gives a fuck, even the teams this early in the season, I, I think LPL's dangerous. Okay, so that's it for this week, Monty. And remember, guys, to always play it by the numbers.